practice squad podcast how are we doing tonight if you are watching this episode it is likely the morning of the 2024 nfl draft we have waited a long time for this day to arrive we have deliberated a lot and here we are with another mock draft because why not one more before things become reality rather than us just you know sitting around and screwing around with the board of players and where they could potentially go so i'm going to do a mock draft first round and about halfway through the second round two reasons why halfway through the second round i do have some trades that i think are going to influence you know how the board falls and i'm trying to catch at least every team um one time before i conclude the mock draft second of all things get way too chaotic by the time you know you're towards the end of the second round um in fact things are probably pretty chaotic just trying to you know make guesses on where players are going to go in the first place so regardless you're here and i'm going to do my best uh to project where each player is going to go um and we'll kind of talk through some of those different scenarios some of the different players they could be looking at and and where i ultimately think each player is going to be selected Starting off with the most boring pick of them all, Chicago Bears with the number one overall pick, select Caleb Williams. Because who hasn't heard that one over the past uh, month and a half or so? Now, Washington's interesting, and it does go both ways, right? Jaden Daniels or Drake May. Um, I am personally in the Jaden Daniels bucket. Um, And really, I think it's just his ability to... um, evade and extend broken plays uh washington's offensive line is not very good they are making moves to try to bolster that i think they're going to continue to make moves in the draft to try to bolster that which we will get to but for right now offensive line is really unproven uh you have a decent receiving core why not give a quarterback with legs and has really good downfield accuracy to try to make the most of that situation not to mention obviously Cliff Kingsbury, um, we kind of know the type of profile of quarterback that he has worked with in the past. I think um, Jaden Daniels fits that profile a little bit better than Drake May, even though Drake May is very mobile. So that is why I'm going Jaden Daniels at number two. Last mock draft I did, I had the Vikings trading up with the Patriots um, at this pick rather than you know somewhere in the, in the following picks. And the reason why is because you can try to start your rebuild with your franchise quarterback. Or you can try to start your rebuild by getting the right infrastructure from a blocking and receiving standpoint and then plugging that franchise quarterback in. And so it's kind of a pick your poison for the Patriots. I think no matter what, they're probably two drafts out from being having a chance at being competitive again, Um, not only because of where their division's at, but obviously new coaching regime for the first time in over two decades and the fact that your offense is in complete shambles. So there's kind of a few different ways that you can approach that problem. And in my last mock draft, I had them approaching that problem by trying to gather more assets and build that offense without a franchise quarterback to start. This time I'm going in the opposite direction. They stick and pick with Drake May. Cardinals. People are calling this a potential trade spot. I personally disagree. Why do I disagree? Because the Cardinals already traded out of a bunch of spots for additional picks last draft and at some point uh, especially when jobs begin to get on the line you have to stop trading back for additional picks because that's a luxury that you tend to only get if you're a really good team a lot of the time you have to start drafting some superstars um we know that their receiving core is depleted we know that there's some other problems areas that they're going to solve you probably already know where i'm going with this they're going to stick and pick and grab marvin harrison jr so there you go. Um, a super unpredictable first four picks for the 2024 draft and a super unpredictable trade coming. Guess who's calling the Chargers and asking them to move down so they could select J.J. McCarthy. Surprise, surprise. It's the Minnesota Vikings. I promise things are going to start getting mixed up in the not so distant future here. But as of now, we're keeping it with pretty much what consensus is going to happen. The Vikings are approaching the Chargers. They're saying, hey, you already got your franchise quarterback, but you have no receivers around him. You don't have the best blocking, and your defense has some holes that it needs to plug. How about we give you 11 and 23, and you know maybe just for fun, like a late, late round pick swap, and because uh, Pro Football Network's algorithm for doing trades um, is ridiculous, I'm just going to start chucking some 2025 picks to 
certify 100% that this trade is going to go through. Sure enough, it does. And the Minnesota Vikings are on the clock and they select JJ McCarthy. Um, I don't think the Giants are going to move off of Daniel Jones because I think that JJ McCarthy and Daniel Jones have relatively similar draft profiles, even though I think JJ McCarthy will likely be a more successful NFL quarterback than Daniel Jones. And so I don't envision the Giants trading up to draft Daniel Jones's replacement in this draft at this point. Maybe I'm proven wrong and they do jump up to grab JJ or maybe go, you know, bargain with the Patriots to grab Drake May. I'm not sure. I'm not super sold on it. And so I have the Giants not trying to trade. They're staying put and they are drafting for the first time in a long time, a receiving weapon in Malik Neighbors, who is a special, special talent. I don't know if I'm fully on board with uh, my co-host Mark saying that he's wide receiver number one, but he's definitely in the conversation and uh, the Giants desperately need um, a true threat at the receiver position. And then we get to the Titans, which again, I think everybody sees this pick coming. We are going with Joe, Joe Alt. And again, I apologize. We are now seven picks in and I've basically gone with consensus, but here's where things get a little bit different. The Jets are in a win now mode. I think their coaches depend on that. Um, they have probably one year left with Aaron Rodgers if that's going to happen. And they already took steps to try to fortify their offensive line so that he's not tearing his Achilles in you know the first five minutes of his career with the Jets um, a second season over. And so what I envision happening is the Jets are going to move up with the Falcons. Um, I think most re realistically, realistically what's going to happen is they'll do 10 for eight and they'll just chuck in like something like, you know, next year's third and a late round pick swap of some sort. Now, because pro football networks uh, trade simulator stinks, I'm also chucking in a bunch of other random assets to make sure that this trade goes through. And it still got rejected. <laughs> They just traded like their entire 20, 2025 draft away to the Falcons and it still gets rejected. So I'm going to go even more aggressive on that. Um, 10 for eight. And we are just going to have 10 for eight. And I am just going to grab like every single pick that they have with the exception of their second round pick and hope that we can make something happen. Did you guys see that? We're going to try it one more time. Or 2Xing what the Saints did way back when. Okay, cool. The trade got accepted. Shocker. Um, and the Jets are going to draft an adult. That is also a receiving weapon that I think is going to mesh with Aaron Rodgers immediately and bring a incredible amount of talent to the table and really complete the Jets receiving core, not just for while Aaron Rodgers is there, but for years into the future. I'm going to draft Roma Dunze to the Jets. Again, I just think he's an incredibly mature player. And the Jets had to do that because I think the Bears really like the idea of drafting Rome Adunze to compliment Caleb Williams. And so they're going to have to be in a situation where they're going to have to jump the Bears most likely, unless the Bears go the second most likely route, which is edge rusher, which is what I'm going to have them do here. Um, the first edge rusher off the board, I think a lot of people are saying Dallas Turner. A lot of people are saying Jared Burse. I'm going to go Liatu Latu. And here's why. Sweat is more of like, he obviously has great pass rush moves, but he is a great run defender and he's just a powerful, powerful dude. Leatu Latu's just has every single technical tool in his toolkit in order to beat a offensive lineman in a pass rush. I think that complement opposite of Sweat is exactly the type of thing that the Bears are looking for. And they clearly pride themselves in their defense right now. And I think, you know, dangerous when you have Caleb William getting dropped into a pretty decent offense too. We'll see how they go about developing him, but I think, hey, take this opportunity, right? Draft a potential franchise edge rusher, put him opposite of the other guy that you just paid a bag. You have a really serious defensive core on your hands. And the Falcons are fine with that because guess what? They still get exactly what they want of the situation, which is the ability to draft an edge rusher. And I think they're going to go with the safest edge prospect on the board, which is Dallas Turner. I'd argue that Jared Verse, by the way, is potentially better than both of those guys, but we're just talking fits here. 
Chargers are on the board after trading down from the Vikings. Olu Fashanu, or Fashnu rather, apologies, is still on the board here. But I think that Talise Fuaga is the better fit for the Chargers. And the reason being is because of his uh, prowess in the run game. I think Jim Harbaugh just loves offensive linemen that are built like Fuaga. I think he's a better fit for wherever Jim Harbaugh is trying to steer the Chargers offensively. Why not grab a guy like Fuaga? The Broncos are on the board. I think they would entertain a tra trade back here to try to get some additional picks. But in order to trade back, you need somebody to trade up. And I don't totally see people making a ton of phone calls unless they're trying to grab a tackle potentially, which can happen. But I don't think that the Raiders are grabbing a tackle. Um, the Saints for sure are, right? So you're leapfrogging the Saints. I mean, I don't know. There, that just gets really complicated and convoluted. What doesn't get complicated and convoluted is that Sean Payton loves him, a incredibly versatile athlete um, that, you know, knows how to use his tight ends. You already know where I'm going with this. It's going to be Brock Bowers for me. That's kind of been my pick at the Broncos. I think they just stick and pick best player available. Uh, Brock Bowers is a generational level tight end. He brings some receiving capabilities back to that team. Their offensive line isn't necessarily in shambles. Um, and I think that's way too early to try to draft a quarterback, be it Penix or Bo Nix at that point. Um, so that's why I have them sticking, picking, going Brock Bowers. The Raiders, there's a lot of fun things that you can do here. Um, I think they're mostly going to look to address defense primarily. And they could go corner, but it's a little bit early for that. I think the more fun pick is to put Jared Verse opposite of Max Crosby with Wilkins in the middle. That is a disgusting defensive line. Um, I think Pierce being a defensive-minded coach is going to see that and just go, gimme, I want that. Um, I want to have one of the best defensive lines in the league in a lead, in a division where you have to deal with Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert just makes too much sense to me. Uh, Jared verse on the other side of Max Crosby, the new Orleans saints on the board. And you know, you could grab a uh, Troy Fatano here because he's versatile. You can put him at tackle. You can put him at guard and they might need that based off of where their offensive line is because man, do they need offensive line? Or you could go with the more talented prospect, in my opinion, and just solve either the guard, you know, guard problem later or whatever. Um, and I have them going with Olu Fashion here. I think he arguably is 1A, 1B to Joe Alt and being the most talented tackle in this draft. He is special. I do not care about the Ohio State game. I think he's going to be a damn, damn good franchise tackle for years to come. Colts are on the board. There's a couple of different things that they could do here, um, but I think more likely than not, their biggest need, I don't know what that ad situation that's popping up at the top there, so apologies on that. I think more likely than not, their biggest need is cornerback, and all of the top corners are still sitting there for them to grab, and you know the other need they could, could potentially be looking at could be edge rusher. A few of those have already gone, though, um, and receiver, those top guys have already gone, too. So why not just stick and pick and grab a talented corner? I think Quinion Mitchell might be more their flavor than Terry and Arnold. I could be wrong. We'll see what happens. But that's what I have them going with. Moving on to the Seattle Seahawks. Um, they have two primary needs. It's defensive line and it's interior offensive line. And I can't think of a better fit than Troy Fatanu. For the Seahawks, I think you have a great interior prospect, but then you can kick him out and play tackle if an injury need arises because they were dealing with a ton of injuries with their tackles last season. Oh, I'm just getting a page is unresponsive. That's super awesome. Don't know why I'm getting that. My bad. Um, we're just going to rock with it. Um, Jacksonville Jaguars. I think Trevor Lawrence headed into kind of a prove it year for them, but I do think he's a good quarterback, and I think Jacksonville is inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt, and I think people are getting fired if they don't have playoff success this year. And so I think that your best option at this point is to go with a Brian Thomas Jr., give him a legitimate receiving weapon with great speed, great length, um, great hands. I mean, the dude is – look, uh, no, no – you know, this on Gabe Davis, but I don't think he's necessarily like this big standout receiver that you need to really, you know, push the needle 
for Trevor Lawrence's success in a division that got surprisingly competitive um, over the past year. I like Brian Thomas Jr. Now, the Bengals have a lot of issues on their hands because they have a really good receiver, um, and T. Higgins asking for a trade, and then um, they just had one of their primary edge rushers ask for a trade, and they lost DJ Reader um, to the Lions in free agency. So there's a lot of different problems they can address, and therefore there's a lot of different areas they can go. And also, a lot of those top receivers came off the board. A lot of those top edge rushers came off the board. But the top defensive tackle prospect is still there, or two of the top defensive tackle prospects are still there. I think Byron Murphy is more their flavor than Johnny Newton, personally. And so that's who we're going to grab. Bengals at 18, stick and pick, Byron Murphy. Okay, the Rams basically have two options, in my opinion. It's edge rusher or defensive tackle. That's their biggest need they need to address. I think they fix their offensive line through developing their offensive line players. Their offense rocks. Their receiving core is disgusting. And their defense isn't half bad. And they just lost a guy. You might know him. His name is uh, Aaron Donald. Um, and look, no one's going to fill Aaron Donald's shoes. It's not happening. But you still need somebody to step into that role. Why not take a guy like Johnny Newton? One of the most fun defensive tackles I have ever seen at the college level. Um He's an incredible athlete. His pass rush moves are awesome. Yes, he's a little bit undersized, but not so much. I mean, we're talking like a 15, 20 pound difference. If, if it was really a big deal, I think he could probably bulk up, but I don't even think they're going to ask him to do that. I think he's fine the way he is. And I think he's going to be a damn good NFL player, Johnny Newton at 19 to the Rams. All right. Taking a look at the Steelers. I think the Steelers are sitting here and going, how the hell is Terry and Arnold still sitting there? And you know, I don't know. I think they have other needs. I think offensive line primarily is one of their, their needs that they need to address. Um, but I don't, I also don't know if Mike Tomlin is going to be able to help himself. And so I go back and forth with that, but I think at the end of the day, they'll probably address the thing that they need more because of the fact that their secondary is looking pretty decent, but their offensive line is looking like a mess. They're going to go JC Latham. Dolphins on the board. I know a lot of people are saying Xavier worthy here. And that's a ton of fun because the speed kills mantra just continues to get doubled down on. But I think they have other needs that are significantly more pressing, like protecting their uh, quarterback. And so I actually think it's most likely that they go with Graham Barton here. They could go Jackson Powers Johnson, but I think Graham Barton's ability to play center or guard um, has a lot of added value to it. He could even play tackle in a pinch. Um, I don't know how successful he's going to be. And frankly, I'm not incredibly high on him as a player. Um, in general, uh, based off the tackle reps that I've seen from him. But I think that um, he would be a very serviceable interior offensive lineman. And so that's what we're going to roll with. The Philadelphia Eagles. I think their biggest need, frankly, is to get some youth in their secondary. It's good, but it's old. Why not go with a guy like Cooper DeGene, who can play safety, he can play corner, he can play nickel, Absolute stud of an athlete, um, tested great, has tons of tape and film of him going up with some of the best of the best to back up his ability to play really anywhere that you need him to in the secondary. I just think it's a good fit. Um, and I think Howie Roseman is good at identifying that kind of value and taking advantage of it. That leaves the Chargers at 23. And they also, look, I know everyone's begging receiver at this point for the Chargers. And I totally understand that. With that being said, I think they have other more pressing needs. And I think Harbaugh doesn't really give a shit about the fact that their receiving core sucks right now, because that is a problem that you can address in the latter rounds. But what you can't address is somebody that can play man on man quarter corner. And you have, you know, a division with a lot of really good quarterbacks. And so why not try to take away one of those options from those talented quarterbacks? Well, I'm saying quarterback really it should be singular. It's Patrick Mahomes. Um, and so here I'm going to go with Terry and Arnold. The other option here is potentially Nate Wiggins, but I don't know. I, I just think Terry and Arnold is a more complete player. And not only do I think he's a more complete play player, but I also think that he's a more horrible esque aggressive, uh, tackles. Well, has the ability to play safety. I mean, it just seems like a great fit for me personally. Okay, taking a look at the Cowboys, I think they're going to go with Amarius Mims here. That's been who I've been mocking this entire time. And the reason being is because the Cowboys know how to develop their offensive line talent. 
Amarius Mims is an athletic freak that just, and he's not even underdeveloped. He just hasn't gotten a lot of playing time. I can't think of a better landing spot for him than the Cowboys, honestly. And I said this last time, and I'm going to continue to roll with that. Packers. I could see them adding secondary here, like a Nate Wiggins or a Kool-Aid McKinstry. But I think more importantly, they need somebody to play tackle for them. Um, they're getting off of, you know, Bakhtiari permanently. And they have a couple needs on the offensive line. And I think you need to be more focused on protecting Jordan Love. And so to me, the guy that they should go with here. Oops. Did I already mock JC Latham? I sure did to the Steelers. Totally forgot about that. All right. I did that entire spiel. And sure enough, he's not even there. And so for that reason, I'll probably go back to, to going to corner here because, I don't know, you could take a flyer on, on Tyler Guyton or Jackson Powers Johnson. Um, li listen to me, like, super graciously pivoting off of that entire thing. Um, and instead, yeah, we'll go Nate Wiggins, right? You have a lot of good receivers in your division. Um, Alexander, you obviously have one side of the field locked up. Try to maybe uh, bolster that with Nate Wiggins and um, also save my ass from um, looking like an idiot as I uh, did this entire talk up for a guy that I already picked. My bad. Um, going to Tampa, edge rusher or secondary here, I think are the two things that they're going to address. Thankfully, there's guys like Chop Robinson or Kool-Aid McKinstry still on the board. I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is really um, a good fit here. Um, obviously, losing Davis um, and the secondary, they need to find a replacement there. I think they still have a decent defensive line slash pass rush. Um, and I think the only person that really jumps out on the screen at this point is Chop Robinson in that position. So it's really just deciding where they decide to go. Uh, but I think edge or cornerback are the most likely here for Tampa at 26. And we're going to go Kool-Aid McKinstry. All right. Cardinals. I don't see a lot of people making this his landing spot, but I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, you just picked up a phenomenal receiver. Um, Kyler's back, and you could look to bolster your defense here, or you can look to bolster your offensive line. Those are your two primary options. I think that your best option here is to go and bolster your offensive line a little bit more, make sure Kyler's protected, make sure he has time to throw to your number one receiver, who will find a way to get open. Um, people might disagree with that pick. I could totally see a Chop Robinson going uh, to the Cardinals as well, but for the purposes of this draft, we're going to have him going to the Arizona Cardinals. 28, Texans. I am picking somebody that I have not mocked to the Tech, or not the Texans, the Bills. What am I talking about? Not mocked to the Bills yet. Um, and the reason why is because I feel like you're getting digs out of the building to get another drama queen into the building. But I think that, Maybe I'm overhyping the fact that A.D. Mitchell is dramatic in the sense that he's begging for the ball and is going to throw a temper tantrum if he doesn't get it. I don't think that's actually the case with A.D. Mitchell. I think A.D. Mitchell's main problem is effort on 100% of his plays. And I think that's a lot easier to get over than potentially him making the game about himself as a rookie, um, which I would say, unless you're you know George Pickens, which I have comped A.D. Mitchell to George Pickens a few times, but um, you, you really don't have... Uh, you know, that kind of attitude to potentially do that. And George Pickens has been catching balls from Kenny Pickett. Um, A.D. Mitchell will be catching balls from Josh Allen. Two pretty different uh, quarterback prospects. And so for that reason, I have the Bills going with A.D. Mitchell. All right. Lions. Um, my goal for this mock draft is to make sure that the Lions get their Dan Campbell guys. Um. And so there's a couple different ways that they can do that. I've mocked them in one of my more recent mock drafts, like trading back into the second round. I do think that is still very much a possibility. You could also take your late second round pick and move up further in the second round rather than trying to trade back. Um, it really depends on where you think a particular player is going to be on the board. And I think this particular player is way higher on a lot of NFL teams boards than we have him and consensus boards or whatever. And I think that player is Xavier Leggett. I think he's a Dan Campbell guy through and through. Um, I think he's exactly what Brad Holmes wants out of a receiver. He's lengthy. He's fast. He's physical. He's got great hands. He's a true X receiver. 
And that's what Brad Holmes has been trying to gun for for really a couple years now and just hasn't quite hit on that. And so I think Xavier Leggett is a Detroit Lion. And I don't, I, they've met with him a lot. And I don't think they intend on letting him slip through the cracks because if he isn't selected by the, the Lions there, I've, you know, had them trading back. But I think, man, the Panthers would, you know, really enjoy working with Xavier Leggett, maybe even KC. Um, Cardinals could double dip. Maybe that's somebody that Harbaugh goes for uh, with the Chargers at 37. There's just too many people in the early second round that would be stoked to grab him. And so for that reason, I think the lions are kind of forced to stick and pick if they truly want that player. And maybe they're not as high on them after all of that research and analysis they did on him. But I do think that there's something there given all of the meetings and time that they've spent with that particular player. Now we have the Baltimore Ravens and the Baltimore Ravens. I have them going with chop Robinson here. Um, they need help on the edge. Um, and I think he's a great fit. Chop Robinson. I'm not going to have him home a lot more of a spiel to that one. Okay. At this point, I think you have the Raiders proposing a trade to the Niners. Um, and that trade is because fifth year options for things like quarterbacks and offensive linemen can be pretty valuable. And so the Raiders are going to offer 44 and just to make sure this trade goes through like everything else that they have, because I'm tired of wasting your time because pro football networks trade thing stinks. <laughs> what are the chances this gets rejected? We're about to find out. No, accepted. Sweet. And they're going to draft Michael Penix Jr. And frankly, I don't love this fit, but I think the uh, the Raiders need to take a shot on a quarterback at some point. I don't imagine them sticking with Gardner Minshew this season. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe they have a tolerance for that, but I don't find that super likely. And then Casey, a couple of years after the fact, but it doesn't matter, drafts their Tyree Kill replacement and Xavier Worthy, who uh, ran the fastest draft speed at the Combine ever, um, but not only that, he has great hands, runs solid routes, gets the job done in other places. Um, I, he's not just a speedster and we're just drafting him off of his athletic traits. He's a good receiver and he has the ability to play wide receiver at the next level. Moving on to the Panthers. Um, I think their biggest need at this point is receiver and Keon Coleman's on the board, does a lot of things for you. Um, you know, I, I think that the Panthers and Ke I mean, either Keon Coleman or Lad McConkey are probably the two, you know, potential prospects here at 33. They need to get Bryce Young a weapon. Um, why not get started with Keon Coleman? All right. Um, the Patriots are then going to take that other receiver um, as the receiver positions pretty much starting to dry up at this point, And they're going to rock with Lad McConkey. The Cardinals are back on the board. You can go a lot of different ways. I had them going, right, addressing the offensive line problem first and then maybe looking at the edge rush, rusher problem next. And Darius Robinson, who's an athletic freak, is on the board here. Why not plug him in and see what he can do at the edge position? The commanders sticking and picking here. Um, I In a different mock draft that I did not do a video for, I have them trading with the Lions, and that's you know the, who the Lions end up trading back with. Um, main thing there is fifth, fifth year option for a tackle is why they would potentially look to do that. They don't do that. That's cool. They still get the guy that I have, um, them grabbing at the end of the first round if they do trade in, which is Tyler Guyton. As soon as that wants to work, computer's acting very weird and slow at the moment. Um, moving on to the chargers who are on the clock now for the third time in this mock draft uh pretty early on and that's why i think that trading back with the vikings is a very lucrative move for them um do they address the receiver position at this spot i don't think so because a lot of the receivers that they would have taken have more or less dried up at this point um i think you know potential guys that you could see going here maybe a jalen polk Kind of a well-rounded receiver might be a good compliment. Has great hands. I don't really like Troy Franklin to them. I don't think that's likely. Maybe they go Roman Wilson because, you know, Michigan. 
Maybe Ricky Pearsall, who has great hands, but I don't think they go any of those guys. I think they might take their shot at some of those guys later in the draft, but I think they do end up going with the Michigan guy, and I think it is the person who, in my book, is the highest-rated linebacker in the draft. He's number four on the consensus board here by Pro Football Network. I disagree. Junior Colston. Get one of your Michigan guys in. You only have so many opportunities to do that as a uh, first-year uh, head coach with a new team. Uh, why not get some reliable guys that you know that you can lean on that are going to play good football and really help establish the culture um, that you're trying to create with your team? The Titans here, man, they could go a few different ways. Um, but in my previous mock drafts, I either have them addressing the cornerback position or double dipping at offensive line, because why not? Like, just make sure Levis is protected. Um, in this situation, I'm going to go TJ Tampa, though, uh, cornerback out of Iowa State get that secondary in a little bit better shape. Panthers are back on the, the clock. They went with the ride receiver, but they still also have the problem of their offensive line stinking. Um, you have two options here. Uh, Kingsley Suamatia um, or Jordan Morgan. Um, with Kingsley, I think you're getting more of a developmental prospect and they have, at least in my opinion, not shown that they can really develop. Um their tackles, maybe the new coaching and general manager um, staff has a different opinion on their ability to develop tackles. But I would go go with the guy who maybe, you know, has shown a little bit more of those traits that you want to see in a NFL caliber offensive lineman a little earlier, earlier on in his career. And that's why I'm going Jordan Morgan. All right. Commanders are then going to grab Kingsley. Double dipping at tackle. Well, not so much. I think Kingsley, you can move inside. Um, and then your offensive line is officially bolstered. Um, again, I think this is something they're going to try to do. The receiving core is in bad shape, but their offensive line stinks. And they just drafted a rookie quarterback. Why not try to protect him? Um, they drafted a rookie quarterback with uh, the idea that he's probably going to struggle this first year and probably have to run for his life a little bit. Um, so at least they're working on trying to solve that problem. Green Bay is back on the clock. Man, I, I struggle with this one, um, especially round one, right? I have them going corner. I think they probably look at offensive line at this point. Um, and so they're going to go Christian Haynes here. Texans are on the clock. I love the idea of them grabbing cornerback Mike Sanders still. I don't know why, just the fit seems too perfect in my head. I I think, honestly, he could be a, a first-round pick, but if he isn't, I don't see him going past the Texans. I don't know why, it just, I feel like D'Amico Ryans is going to want this dude, and I just think he's a perfect fit for what the Texans got going on. The receiving core is already in great shape. Why not stick and pick there? Um, Falcons on the board. Um one of their main problems right now, honestly, is interior offensive line. Um, I think that half of their offensive line is really good. Half their offensive line is just okay. Um, why not try to solve that problem with, you know, a guard, and uh, Cooper B. San Francisco, after trading back, is back on the clock. Um, I think they need safety help really bad. And so I have them going with the consensus top safety, Tyler Newbin. And then, look. I like the Saints a lot. Uh, they're like my number two team behind the Lions that I kind of follow and enjoy watching play football. And I think a lot of Saints fans are absolutely going to hate this pick. And yet I'm about to make it. Um, I think they need a backup quarterback. I think that um, the entire experiment um, is not going super great offensively over there. And so I think things might get hit, you know, a reset button some way or another um, with Derek Carr or any other offensive pieces. And so I have them going Bo Nix here. And um, I don't know, man, it just feels like the right fit. I personally don't even love it, but for whatever reason, I just see them taking a shot at the quarterback um, relatively early on because I, you need a Derek Carr got injured like four times last season. Like you clearly need a backup to him. And I don't know if the Derek Carr experiment in new Orleans is actually working out. I know my tune sounds incredibly different from what it was last year, where I was really stoked, stoked and excited about it, but I just don't know if it's the move. Okay. 
I'm going to make one last pick here because I think I officially have gone through, uh, maybe not the Browns, but that's okay. Sorry, Browns fans. Um, as a Lions fan, I think that people will potentially like this one. I have Detroit moving up with the Colts. We're going to do whatever stupid stuff we have to do to force this trade through. You guys are probably tired of me saying that at this point. And drafting the other mega Dan Campbell guy, in my opinion, Zach Frazier. I just, he's a wrestler. He played the last drive of his college career with a broken leg um, to spare his team from having to do a 10 second runoff because they had no timeouts. And then he gets healthy quickly enough to test for the draft. If that doesn't scream Dan Campbell from the rooftops, I don't know what does. I could see them sticking and picking for Zach Frazier at 29. I just think you have a better shot at getting him in the second round than you do Xavier will get. That's why I have the Lions selecting him here at 46. I'm going to conclude the mock draft there. I think there's still a lot of other, you know, potential things to talk about. Um, and, you know, I've done a couple full two-round mock drafts, but I just don't want things to get too wonky here. I'm going to know my own limitation. I'm also going to know um, your ability to stay entertained by me sitting here and talking through something. When Who gives a shit? Because, uh, what, seven, eight hours after this airs, we're going to know what reality is rather than hypotheticals. So if you did watch along, I appreciate you watching this far. Let me know in the comments why I'm an idiot. I'm excited to hear about it. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, the, the NFL draft is finally here. I hope that everybody sincerely enjoys it. I know I'm going to. Feels like a long time coming. It's only been two months since the season has ended, and it feels like an eternity. I, don't, I am so stoked for the draft, and I'm sure everyone else is too. Hope you guys enjoy it. Have a good one. Peace.